We also, our Vietnamese are, are not with us this morning uh, in the back. Uh, they are in, they're, having they're having a separate, separate service, service of the speakers uh, in the fellowship hall. So uh, we remember them in spirit, uh, and we appreciate them being here and a part of uh, our fellowship and our congregation. So we'll be remembering them this morning. Again, welcome. If you look on the back of your bulletin, there's several announcements to remember. Judy Jones is our Deacon of the Week, and she'll be reading the psalm in just a little bit. There, uh, our Thanksgiving Eve service is Wednesday at 7 p.m. This is uh, homemade vegetable soup and beef, and then a vegetarian soup. Uh, just a simple meal. It's been a, uh, I guess we've done it for about 16 or 17 years. Just a good way to start uh, the holiday season. Uh, just come on out. We uh, have a good time around the table. We uh, around the table we have the we pass out, always have passed out the five grains of corn, remembering the, the pilgrims, and remembering uh, very special things. And then we just eat the meal. And then at the end, uh, what better way to start this season than communion? And so we will have communion. And then the next time we'll have, we'll communion, have communion as a congregation will be on Christmas Eve. So that's the bookends of uh, our season. And it's a good way to begin it. It's a good way to celebrate it. And so come on out and be with us. Uh, you don't have to make reservations because if we have more people than we think, we just add water. <laughs> it works. So, you know, that always works. We have it at 7 because the traffic's always bad that day, and that gives you enough time. And uh, uh, it works good. Now, all of our Advent services, uh, all the services that we have in the evening, all those will be at 6 p.m. Yeah, that we, we standardized on that a couple of years ago. Uh, December 4th is the Moravian Love Feast. Our friends from the Rural Hall Moravian Church in, in Rural Hall, North Carolina, outside of Winston, uh, they'll be coming, and we hope this year that they're going to bring some of their brass with them. Not, not brass being their head knockers, you know. Brass being the tuba and the French horn and all that stuff. Because Moravians are known for their brass instruments, and so it's, it's, it's a good time. Uh, mark that down. Uh, it's a beautiful service. We have the original uh, Moravian Love Feast candles and uh, cups, and uh, it's just a great time. It's a wonderful way. So uh, invite people. Uh, we'll, uh, some of you will be deaners that night, and uh, it's a good, good, and we're glad to bring it to Concord. Uh, then our adult choir, the children's musical will be at 6 p.m. on December the 11th. We look forward to that. Uh, Jesus the King, and then the adult choir will be with us on the tent. Well, they'll be with us the whole time, but they have spe very, very extra special music. Because all the music, he, he told me a long time, don't say special music, because all music is special, right? Yeah. So they're going to have extra special music on uh, December the 18th. Also on that day, uh, I'll have the joy of baptizing, as we remember last week, Ava, but also my, I'm going to baptize all the granddaughters I have. Uh, Sophie's, uh, Sophie will be baptized that day, uh, too. So it's going to be a really good day, and we look forward to the 18th. And then we pack the pokes on 10 a.m. on Christmas Eve. Uh, we will finish packing the pokes at 10.15. Uh, Ernie is a taskmaster. We can pack all those pokes in, in no time at all. If you don't know what a Christmas poke is, you will. Uh, it's just, a, 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 I don't know how many years we've done it, but a long, time, maybe a hundred years. Uh, it could be. Uh, it's a fruit and some candy, and it just, when we pack those pokes and put them in the bag, it smells like Christmas. It's just a wonderful tradition at this church, and it's fun, uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, th those pokes are always given in uh, a memory of uh, Gene, uh, not Gene Mars, uh, his dad. And uh, he loved it so. Arthur Morris just loved uh, the Pokes. And we appreciate the Morris family for continuing that tradition. All right, we're collecting new and gently used coats for children up to size 10. We need prepackaged socks and underwear for preschool age kids, uh, especially when you wake up in a morning like this and it's cold weather. Kids need coats. And some people can't afford good coats, and we can do something about that. And, uh, so help us out if you will. Our barbecue is still available in one and five pound frozen packages. Uh, see Bruce. We have a other tradition that we have uh, for a long, long time is uh, that we want to get uh, our, the new 
fiscal year. Our fiscal year is the same as our annual year, and that will start January 1st. Uh, we like to present the new budget, uh, on the 2017 budget. We always like to do that before Advent, so we get that out of the way. Uh, our budget is our spending plan. It is a map to what our priorities are and everything else. And our tradition has been, we discuss that the week before, and then we vote in each of the worship services on this Sunday. And so uh, we have said that, so we're going to consider ourselves in session. Uh, we're a, a democratic church, we're a, a congregational church, and uh, this is the way we, we do business. So we consider ourselves now in session for this purpose of the adoption of the 2017 budget. I'll call upon our chairman of our Finance and Stewardship Committee, Bruce Airwood. Thank you, Steve. Before I do present the budget for adoption, I would like to say out in the vestibule, there, are, there is uh, numerous copies of the 2017 budget for you to pick up and to look at and to review. But uh, being a congregational church and being as transparent church, we present the budget to you so you'll see where uh, your dollars are going, how they're being spent. That being said, I would like to present to the congregation for adoption the 2017 budget, which has been unanimously approved by the deacons uh, last Sunday, I believe it was, uh, and we would like to present it to you for adoption for this coming year. That motion has been made. It does not require a second because it comes both from the deacons and the Finance and Stewardship Committee. Again, we had our discussion last week, a very informative session. The copies of the budget are out there. Those And the copies we're talking about is a descriptive copy. Uh, it, um, the budget is uh, designated by items and what goes in those items. It lets you know everything that is happening within the congregation. It's very, very important and uh, we're glad that we can be uh, that open and that transparent. That being said, all in favor, if you'll signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Okay, the easy part was that. The hard part is that we give out of our hearts, out of our lives, to meet that budget because that is what uh, uh, prioritizes our goals, our objectives, and that's what we need to do in this coming year. And we will do that because we, we, we have faith in God's mercy and God's providence. It's good to be here this day. You want to tell Francis, Kate, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> this very day. Let's stand and greet each other.
Blessed be the Lord God, who gathers us here in this place. From across the street, from from the world, God brings us home to the heart of grace. Blessed be the Lord God, who has remembered us. Scoffers and sinners, watchers and waiters, we are those redeemed by God. Amen. May we join together in singing hymn number 161, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Let's stand as we sing, please. Hymn 161.
Good morning. I hope all of you will have a wonderful Thanksgiving this coming week with your family and your friends and uh, celebrate what God has given us to be thankful for. I'm going to be reading the Old Testament reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version, and it's Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose stream makes glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day to be in your house of worship. We thank you for your amazing power and your work in our lives. Thank you for life itself. Thank you for your goodness and blessings over us. We know that we do not give you thanks nearly enough. Forgive us for that, and may we take the opportunity every day to give you thanks and not just on the day set aside for thanksgiving. Open our hearts to the hungry, homeless, and the poor. We are so thankful for your many blessings in our own lives. Be with those today that have special needs and special prayer requests. Be with our nation and the leaders as they strive to bring our country back to unity. Be with our church, communities, as we work together to further your kingdom. Go with us today as we carry your word from this place to others that we may come in contact with and as we live our daily lives. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we do pray. Amen. Our children will come forward. Lindsay will meet them on the steps. like wearing hats. Do you like hats? I found some fun hats for us to wear today. So if you see a hat like this, what do you know? Oh, that person must be a firefighter. And we have some very hardworking firefighters right now that are working in our state. And then I found this one. Oh, I have two. And you can say, you know, I don't know what you do, but you look like you're a lot of fun. That's what I think about this hat. And then there's this one. Maybe you see that a lot around Easter, right? Or you think maybe that person just likes rabbits. How about this one? What do you think if you see somebody wearing a tiara or a crown? Princess? Do I look like a princess? Maybe, yes. So if you see somebody wearing a crown, you think, hmm, they must be really important. They must be a king or a queen. We're learning about kings and queens in children's choir right now, aren't we? We get to wear crowns. Did you know that Jesus was called a king? If you think of a king, what do you think a king does? He's rule the world. That's a pretty big responsibility, huh? 
as a firefighter had. He rules the kingdom. Well, Jesus was a different kind of king, and he didn't wear a big fancy crown, so people didn't know he was a king that way. But he did something even bigger. He loved us so much that he chose to die for us. That's a pretty big deal. You like that one too? Uh Uh-oh. So that's a pretty big gift. And he didn't have to wear a big fancy crown to be our king. But he loves us so much, and that's a pretty great gift. Will you guys pray after me? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you love us so much that you chose to die for our sins. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Lindsay. Let's join now in our offertory hymn this morning, hymn number 637. Come, you thankful people, come. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we could be here today to worship you, spirit and truth. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity you give us to give back a portion of that which you have so blessed us with. Now we ask that you would take our tithes and offerings, multiply them so that they may be used to spread thy word around this world that you have created. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. The song I'm about to sing, I would like to dedicate in the memory of a good friend of mine. Um, her name is um, Carolyn Jenkins. Carolyn Jenkins and I were members of a church way back in Texas, a long time ago. And she is actually no longer with us on this side of life, long time ago. But every time I think of this song, I think of her. She had the voice of an angel. Um, whenever I hear her sing, to me, she sounded exactly like Mahalia Jackson. For many of you, I think some of you know who Mahalia Jackson is. If you don't, I challenge you, just like I challenged the, the, uh, the, the early service, go to YouTube, find Mahalia Jackson, wonderful, wonderful voice. And so Miss Jenkins was Mahalia to me in the flesh at my church, and I hope the song I sing will honor her the best I can. <clears throat> Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary. To view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. If not for grace, my soul would be a drifting ship with no safe harbor from the angry waves. But Calvary's cross shines brightly through the darkest storm. And just in time, his mercy rescues me. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for you and for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. He looked beyond all of my faults and saw my need. Also very beautiful, thank you. It reminded me this morning, it reminds me now, one of the wonderful things about church is having all the generations. And that there are some things that we speak generationally of that people understand and some things they don't. You have to look things up on YouTube now. And Mahalia Jackson. Uh, you read the way this week, you know, I talked a little bit about my dad. And then also on Facebook, I was reminded that one story I didn't tell was when I was four or five, I told my mother I, I dreamed I had a record player. Now, some of you don't even know what a record player is. It had three speeds, 78, 45, and 33 and a third. The 78s were the best. <laughs> they could really go fast. So she went out and bought me a record player. 
my dad came up to me and said, Steve, tell your mother that you dreamed I had a Cadillac. <laughs> he didn't get a Cadillac. Our New Testament lesson this morning. Before we do the New Testament, we, we, uh, yesterday was a really big day. We had the opportunity of finishing the football season at UNCC. And, uh, this year, for the first time, we'll make a little over $17,000. That counts the spring game. That counts running two second sessions to stands for three games. Plus, uh, we even sit six people over twice to another concession stand. And, and that's just a wonderful. Everybody, and, and, and we really thank uh, Jamie Poe for all that she's done to make that possible. If you don't think that's a headache, it is a headache and to plead and to get everybody to come. But uh, what a wonderful turnout you have had, and we've been able to do that. If everybody there, Jamie, first, let's say thank you to Jamie. Stand up. Now, everybody that's helped this year, stand up, if you can stand, <laughs> after yesterday. It makes a big, big difference. That being said, uh, as you know, all the football monies went to debt retirement. Uh, as our, um, uh, we have, We're now into basketball season. And we, we also do the basketball uh, concession stand at UNCC. And all of that money goes to help subsidize our mission program, uh, especially the Arkansas mission trip and some other special things that we have extra monies to do because of your help. Uh, if, you, if you feel those people that stood up, if you feel you'd like to stand up next year and, and have some of this fun, uh, Tuesday night uh, there's a basketball game and we could use some help. See, Jamie... Uh, you get a T-shirt and a hat out of it. And that is, isn't that wonderful? But uh, help us if you can. And we do really need help this Tuesday. And we, we'll, we'll put the rest of the schedule again in the bulletin and in the way. This is Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. It ends the church liturgical year. We have all kinds of years. Uh, the liturgical year will, uh, begins with Advent and then moves to this Sunday. This is the Sunday we think about who Jesus is, how Jesus is, and what Jesus is, and in the reign that he has. What kind of king is this Jesus? We look at the wonderful message of his coming from Luke, Luke 1, 68 to 79, portending him. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word and may indeed we follow the path of peace always in our life as we follow Jesus, the Christ, the King of kings. May we pray. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful that we can come into this place at this time. We're thankful for your very presence. We're thankful that we can come sharing our burdens, our cares, our sorrows, and all the things that bind us together. We remember those who will be having surgeries this week. We remember Karen Smart and Tim Alston. We lift them up to you, and we know that you are the great physician and that your hand is there. 
We remember others who are suffering from debilitating illnesses. We remember others who are suffering so many different kinds of things. But you are here with us. You're with us every step of every day in every way. And we are thankful for that very presence. And we open our hearts and our eyes and our very lives that we might feel it, that we might experience it, that we might know your grace, and that we might share your grace. We come in this time praying for forgiveness. We forgive the times when we have been arrogant, when we have been proud, when we have been haughty, when we have been judgmental. We come asking for forgiveness for the times when we have not stood up for the poor, when we have not been generous in our hearts and in our actions, when we have not cared for justice at all but took only what we thought was ours. Oh, Lord, forgive us. Fill our hearts with your spirit with your love, with your care. And as we know your, forgive us, your forgiveness, help us to learn to be merciful and forgiving of others. We remember our world. It is a world that is too full of hate, too full of strife, too full of envy, too full of greed. But it is still a world that you have loved, that you do love, and that you are loving. We are reminded of our responsibility and how we must live in such a world and be peacemakers. We remember even now how you once taught us to pray, and so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we come here on this last Sunday of the liturgical year to proclaim the reign of Christ. As we begin Advent next week, we will be wearing blue and we will be remembering that Jesus is coming into our world. We remember what it means to welcome a king into our lives and into our hearts and to what we are. But we come to this Sunday because we have arrived at the destination. We have come around the circle. I love Harry Chaffin and one of the songs like, All My Life's a Circle. And we have come full circle now. And in that full circle, we have learned a lot. We have learned something of the words and action of Jesus, who is the Lord, who is the Christ, who is our King. And we are challenged to apply those words. This Sunday in the church calendar is actually relatively new. Pope Leo XII, I think, in 1932, began the practice of its spread to all the other churches. Interesting enough, the practice began almost as a deal between Mussolini and Hitler. And in, in doing that, the, the church received certain benefits. And so we ask ourselves, why in the world are we still celebrating uh, a Sunday that has such odd beginnings? Well, because the truth of the Sunday rings far greater than any political concerns. There's always a choice between who you're going to serve. Now, Steve's not going to get to go to Oslo because Dylan's not going. But we all remember his song, We All Serve Somebody. Who are you going to serve? That's really the question we have today as we come to this Sunday. Who is the king in your life? This image of king is a very interesting image to start with. The people of Israel didn't particularly, uh, the prophets never wanted a king. But the people demanded a king. They wanted a king. And you know why they wanted a king? Because everybody else had a king. If everybody else has a king, we need a king. Does that remind you of your kids? Everybody's doing it. We want one too. And so they got a king. And immediately they had buyer's remorse. Why did you give us such a king? 
in the sadness and the tragicness of Saul, prophets would always be a thorn in the king's flesh. So why do we have this image then of Jesus? What is Jesus telling us? What is our faith telling us about who Jesus is? And what does it mean to even have a king? The people who wrote the Gospels, they wrote in a time of, of great turmoil, of great upheaval. When the biblical things talk about an antichrist, it's not just some pie in the sky being. You better believe the antichrist is the emperor. The emperor is everything that Jesus is not. The emperor is the king. The emperor is the one that demands worship as a deity. The emperor is the one that sets the, the emperor, especially Augustus, is seen as the king of peace. His kingdom of peace is that he crushed people into submission and ushered in a time of prosperity and trade. The biblical witness says there's more than that. This emperor is not the king of kings. This emperor is not the Lord of lords. This emperor is not the one that you should be worshiping. You do have a king, but you find that king in this Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth, this Jesus that was born in a stable. This Jesus whose, verse is, whose birth as Luke gives it to us is proclaimed by shepherds. The Magi, they come from afar. And they come to where they think a king should be. They come to the halls of government. They come to Herod's magnificent palace. They go to Jerusalem and say, where is he? Born king of the Jews, we have come that we may worship him. And oh, what trouble they cause by not knowing where to go. Eight miles down the road, out in the country, with a manger as a bed, there was cradled a king. And that is the king that we worship this day. Not the one who berates us or dominates us or rules us by those kinds of things, but the one who wants our heart, who wants our lives, who wants us to follow him in examples of obedience. The one who came to be among us, Emmanuel, God with us. The one who pitched his tent beside us and walked among us and, and did the things that we were unimaginable, who touched the untouchable, who broke down walls, who broke down barriers, who spoke to women and heathen and pagans and, and who had supper and dinner and, and changed water into wine. This is the king. This is the Lord. This is the Christ. The emperor is the Antichrist, all that Jesus is not. And you have a choice. You get to choose. You get to choose who you're going to follow. You get to choose by how you're going to live your life. You get to choose on the things that are important to you. You can follow the emperor. You can follow Augustus. You can follow all of these people, or you can follow Jesus who taught us how to love, who taught us how to live, who taught us how to die. And that's the king. You know, as I told you before, you should know by now, after 17 years, one of my favorite theologians is Mark Twain. I love one of his sayings. It's not all that popular, but oh boy, does it hit home. That if Jesus were coming again today, you know what he would be? There's one thing he wouldn't be, be a Christian. That hurts, but too true in too many cases. But you remember the wonderful story he tells, the prince and the pauper? You remember the prince who has everything pampered, 
everything given to him, uh, who lives a very sheltered life. And you remember the pauper who struggles every day. And they switch places. And all the lessons that the prince learns. Is this not what God is telling us? The word has been made flesh and has dwelt with us. The world word has walked among us and talked with us and lived with us and knows us and lived with us and died with us. Jesus is the one who came to us what truly matters. And so on this day, we worship Jesus, who is the king. He doesn't look like a king. He doesn't seem to act like a king. But if you have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to feel, you know the king. You know his love. You know his light and his life. And even as you know him, you are called to be like him in this world. To love, to care, to share. That is the light. That is the life. That is the king, and that is the reign of Christ. Join, join in it by living your life and serving the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the light of all, Jesus. May we pray. Our Father, speak to our hearts and our lives. Oh, dear Lord, we confess that we've been snookered by many things. We've been pressed sometimes by all the wrong things. And we have forgotten what truly matters. Even as we come into this time of thanksgiving, oh Lord, forgive us when we have only been thankful for all the things that we have and possess. And we forget about the things that truly matter the relationships, the world that we live in, and the lives of others our place in the world. Dear Lord, when we have a different kind of perspective, when we know the difference between Caesar and Jesus, we find life. And we are thankful. So help us to be grateful in the very depth and the heart of who we are because we know that we have been given everything You have given us life. Now we may we find the purpose in that life by serving you. Help us. In your name we do pray. Amen. We come to our hymn of invitation. Now thank we all our God. Our invitation is on this last Sunday of the liturgical year. To know the King of Kings. To know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and to follow him. We invite you to make that profession. We invite you to come and be a part of our fellowship, our membership here at McGill. We invite you to follow Jesus as we stand and sing. Now thank we all our God.
glad that you have chosen to worship with us this day. We hope that you felt at home and a part of all that we do at McGill. If you're our guest this morning, we invite you back. We invite you to be a part of everything that we do. It's going to be a good week. Wednesday night is with no, no other events but the 7 o'clock supper and communion, so come out and be a part of that. We will have Tuesday Bible study at 12, uh, so be uh, that group. Uh, they're uh, starting a new book this week. Uh, not a Silent Night, uh, Prepare for Advent, well, another Hamilton book. It's a good book. So we're glad. Again, you were here. Don't forget Tuesday. Uh, if you can help with the concession stand, please let Jimmy know. Make her feel less anxious. We appreciate it. And now go from this place. For the world needs you. And God loved the world. And so much you, must you. For the church was never meant to stay confined. But the church was meant to go out into the world. To ambassadors of peace. Of love. Of hope. Of Jesus. And so go. And serve your king by being like him. In the name of the Father who loves us all, in the name of the Son who came to show us that love, and in the name of the Spirit that is that love. Go. Go.